Good morning, everybody. This is Justin with SupboardGuide.com, and today we're going to be reviewing the Nautical Series inflatable paddle boards from iRocker. And now the Nautical Series is one that iRocker launched a couple years ago. They have two different options, the 10 foot 6, the 11 6. We're going to be covering both boards in this review because they're essentially the same board, just one's a little bit longer. And some of the key things before we dive into all the details is this is iRocker's foray into the budget category. Um, with inflatable paddle boards it's the goal that iRocker set out to was to be able to give people a legitimate sub $500 inflatable paddle board option and that's what they've done they've essentially taken a lot of the things that you get from the iRocker lineup and brought that down into this really nice budget level board and they've created a board that is it's not just like a cheap $300 sup from Amazon, those we're not big fans of. You're gonna hear that throughout this review. Um, but what, what iRocker has done, they've made a legitimate budget option that is great for beginners um, and even intermediate paddlers who are on a budget that want a paddle board that you can start on, you can learn on, and actually enjoy paddle boarding, but then still grow a little bit. It's not just a board that you know only works for kids as they're dinking around on the lake playing King of the Mountain. So it is one of our favorite budget level SUPs and we'll dive into the details and find out why. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the kit that comes included with the nautical. Um, because it is important to note that you basically get everything you need to get out on the water minus the life jacket when you purchase one of the nautical boards. Now I have the 10.6 model on my back and I'm gonna walk you through the kit with that one. And just remember that you get the same things with the 11.6 version. Um, so first, you get this really nice backpack from Nautical. It's very lightweight, it's comfortable. I'd say you definitely could do, you know, a couple mile, mile hike on this. Um, nice padded shoulder straps. The hip here also, you can cinch it up nice and tight so you can move around and walk around with it. One thing to notice as I take this off, I'll show you, is they did not include the wheels. So this is, there's not wheels on here. They do have a, an option that you can buy kind of a plastic piece of wheels. I'm not a huge fan of it, um, but if, if you are kind of someone who doesn't like to carry this around, it's about 36 pounds, then you could look at, look at getting that option. The other thing that they didn't include from the iRocker backpack is they didn't include any side handles here. So that's really my only complaints with the backpack. When I'm loading it, I like to have a handle here, otherwise I just have to come down here. So yes, I'm being very picky, but just wanted to let you know that. So here's the backpack. As I, I'm gonna open this up, unroll the paddleboard, and walk you through everything that does come included in the kit. Um, so you have this front pouch here. I don't have anything in there right now, but you can store the pump, you can store um, the leash, et cetera, in there. As you open it up, see it opens up most of the way and has all of this included here. It's down. So, in the kit, first start out with their, with their paddle. It's a three-piece fiberglass shaft, lightweight plastic blade. And it's a pretty decent, decent paddle, not as good as the iRocker paddle, but for this kit level, I do like it. You have nautical single chamber dual action pump here. Again, it's not the dual chamber pump that you get with the iRocker or black fin line. Um, does keep the kit a little bit lighter weight, but you do lose some performance on that, again, compared to the more expensive ones. But as far as if you're comparing this to other budget level subs, I would say the, the paddle is also a little bit better than what you get with some of those. Then you obviously have the board. And down here, you do have the three fins. So it's the tri-fin setup. 
and the repair kit. So I'm just gonna put the repair kit back in here and then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna pump this up and show you how all of that works. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and pump this thing up. Again, with Nautical, you get that single chamber dual action pump that is, a, for this price range, is a decent pump. I'm not even gonna try to use it though, to be honest, I'm kinda tired of pumping up inflatable sups. And I'm gonna go straight to iRocker's electric pump. Um, and I can't recommend this enough. It just, it really does make it so much easier and relaxing when you get out there. They also have this nice battery pack that just goes together. You can see I'm not tied to my car. I can bring this out anywhere. So we're gonna pump this up and we'll put a little timer so you see how long it takes to pump up with the electric pump and how that functions. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the features and the specs of the nautical lineup. What I've done here is I've, I've got the 11.6 and the 10.6 boards, so you can see them, but really pay it, just, just keep note that the boards are identical with the exception of the extra foot of length that you get on the 11.6. It's not wider, the shape's not different, none of the features are different on the 10.6 versus the 11.6. So, how are these made? They, and again, as we go through this, you're gonna notice how iRocker really pulled down a lot of the R&D from the iRocker lineup onto the nautical. So we start with a dual layer PVC with drop stitch inner core. Now, the difference between this and the iRocker lineup, the iRocker lineup has the triple layer composite. This is a dual layer composite, so it makes it a little bit lighter and not quite as stiff. This board here is 20 pounds. The 10.6 is, is 22 pounds. So yes, you do knock off a couple pounds because you lose that PVC. It helps bring the price down a little bit. You do lose a little bit on the performance. We'll go into that in the performance section, but overall, really nice, solid material. Has a two-year warranty and is backed up by iRocker, so you really can feel comfortable there. Now, this one's 10.6 by 32 by six inches. This is 11.6 by 32 inches wide by six inches. Um, so it is, it fits really square into that all around category. And iRocker's built the boards with tons of features and accessory options to really kind of further enhance the all around category there. So one thing you'll notice is lots of D-rings. So there's 18 D-rings on both models, including one behind the nose, so you can tow it behind a boat. You have the two bungee areas, one in the rear, one in the front, um, sometimes, to be honest, I like to take off the rear one. Um, most of the stuff I store, I usually try to keep it in front of me so I can see it. And I like to move around a lot on the board. And so sometimes I will remove this. Notice it is not removable like the new Ultra Series. I mean, I'd love it if they would do that on the Nautical. I know they're hitting a price point, so I don't know if they'll get to it. I'm not saying that that's a con. Just notice if you do want to take it off, you'll have to retie it afterwards. Um, as I mentioned, I like to move around a lot on the board, and so I do like how Nautical has made this not quite a full-length deck pad. It goes from here on the tail all the way up here on front to on the front. And so you do have a nice long deck pad. It is comfortable. You have the grooves up front that help kind of keep some of the water off. And you really can paddle on this on this deck pad for a long time. It is definitely, I would say, a little more on the soft, comfortable side than the super grippy side, but it still does have enough grip. I don't slip off this. Um, you have three carry handles. So the rear, the middle, and the front. We covered the bungees, but also one thing that I really like that they brought down from the iRocker lineup is you do have these safety grab handles both in the rear and in the front of the board. That's just nice if you have kids um, that you're paddling around with. And definitely, especially with the 11.6, even for larger paddlers, kids fit on really nice. I take my kids on these boards a lot, and I do like having those grab handles. Um, just makes them feel a little more safe. And then finally, you have the action mount. It's hidden here, but you do have that front action mount if you want to uh, attach a GoPro or fishing rod or a cup holder, you do get that one action mount with a nautical. So as you can see, it really is a very feature rich board 
especially for the budget category. All right, so now we're gonna go really quick over the paddle that you get with the nautical. As you can see, it's a three-piece three -piece paddle. The shaft is a fiberglass shaft with a lightweight nylon blade. And it goes, to, goes together really easily, right? So this, this section here, it's just a pin lock. Slide it in. Be careful not to pinch your finger there, by the way. I may have done that a few times. It does not feel good. And then the top handle here, you'll notice you've got these holes and there's just a pin inside of this that you slide it in and lock it into place, right? And so you get good range, good height range for shorter paddlers down here, right? And then for taller paddlers, you can go all the way up here. We have the details on the written review if you wanna go see the exact lengths, right? But it, definitely a good range. I'm 5'11 and three quarters and that's definitely too tall for me and too short for me. Um, now, with this paddle, the things that I like that what they've done is they have made it the fiberglass. A lot of kit paddles in this range are aluminum, and when you really start to crank, you know, and really try to go fast, I tend to bend them. This one, we've had for about a year and a half now, and I haven't had any issues, no bending, no breaking, and so it is nice and Firm. It's not as firm as their carbon fiber blend that you get with the iRocker or full carbon with the black fin, but that's to be expected. I do like as well how they kept the same kind of lightweight nylon blade that you get in the iRocker lineup. Um, Allie's not the biggest fan of the scoop that you get here. I personally do like it. I, I'm able to have a nice high cadence with this and go pretty darn fast. So all in, I am very happy with the paddle that you get with the kit. All right, now we're gonna dive into the fin setup on the nautical. Again, keep in mind, it's the same for the 10.6, it is the 11.6. And the fins are really one of the things that set this apart from a handful of other budget level SUPs. And that's because iRocker gives you three independent snap lock fins. And the reason why I like that, a lot of the other budget boards, they'll come with fixed gummy fins, um, like the Performer that you get at Costco from Body Glove. They're like three fixed gummy fins. They're small and they don't really do a good job. These ones actually do really well. We'll get more into it in the performance section, but the other thing that's nice about them is, yes, you have to put them in, but it's very easy. So all you do is you take it, snap it in, and it locks in, that's it. Now, when you get it brand new, sometimes it is a little bit tight and you have to kind of push it a little bit, but that does loosen up over time and gets really easy to do. Just make sure it's all the way pushed down and make sure that is locked in. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the performance section of the nautical review. And we're gonna start with stability. Um, we always start with stability with boards, but especially with kind of the less expensive, what we would consider generally speaking, beginner boards. It's very important to make sure that you get a board that has enough volume and that has a good shape that'll support you. Otherwise, you end up basically paddling on your knees and it's just not the same thing. Um, it really is one of my biggest complaints when you're dealing with like those $300 boards that you get off, on, off of Amazon is I see all the time people just out there, they're not standing up. And so they're not really standing up paddle boarding, they're knee paddle boarding. So the question really is, how does the nautical do? So this nautical against 10.6 by 32, it has a listed weight capacity of 240 pounds. And so we really wanted to test that and see how it does, you know, because I only weigh 180. I'm an experienced paddle boarder, so I wanted to, you know, replicate as much as I can what it would be like if I put a lot of weight. And so what we did is we put on two different water bags that are about 40 pounds each. And so that, with my weight, actually kicked it up to 260 pounds. And you can see in the B-roll footage that, we're, that we'll show you, the board actually performed really well. Yes, you got a lot of flex out of the board. That goes back to that dual layer construction instead of the triple layer construction you get out of the iRocker and Blackfin lineups. But to be honest, the flex did not actually take away from the stability as much as I expected it to. In some regards, it almost made it a little bit easier as I got up on weight because it kind of absorbed that weight a little bit more. 
You will, when we talk about speed, that does affect the speed, but from a stability standpoint, the nautical really does a good job. So the 10.6, again, 240 pound weight limit. And when I had my 260 pounds, it was pretty centered. So yes, if you're a fairly tall or fairly larger paddle boarder, um, you, you might be okay on the 10.6. In reality though, if you're above 5'7", above 170-ish, I would definitely recommend the 11.6 because it will greatly improve your stability given that extra volume, that extra foot of length really helps out, especially when you start adding more things, a child, camping gear, whatever you want to, I would definitely recommend the 11.6. The 10.6 can handle it, but it doesn't do quite as a good of, quite as good of a job. Um, but again, bottom line stability wise, for a beginner board, they both did really well. Okay, so now we're moving on to the maneuverability section. And I'm, I switched to the 11.6 for one specific reason. When you go to iRocker's website, they kind of give a performance data out of like 100. And for some reason they have the 11.6 at a 50 out of 100 and the 10.6 at an 80 out of 100 on maneuverability. And to be honest, I kind of disagree with them. Simply because maneuverability is where the nautical gets really fun because it's so lightweight. Like the 11.6 is only 22 pounds. It makes it really easy to just turn using just basic, you know, side sweeping strokes, back sweeping strokes, and you can kind of see it here and in the B-roll, they're really easy boards to maneuver around. And so I do think both the 10.6 and the 11.6 are fairly maneuverable. Yes, the 10.6 is more maneuverable than the 11.6, but in general, they're both very maneuverable, very fun, kind of sporty, lightweight feeling boards. And I think Nautical did a really good job with that. Um, they're, so again, we cover, cover kind of just your general turning sweeps very maneuverable, but also when you get kind of more advanced and want to get and really maneuver around using that step back turn, these are pretty easy boards to do that on because they kept the same shape as the iRocker series. That tail is fairly wide, 16 inches in the back, and it just gives you a nice platform to really sink the tail, turn around, spin on a dime, and do that you know step back turn or buoy turn for when you do get a little more advanced or just want to have kind of, you know, some fun out on the lake or in the river. For speed and tracking, and again, this is an area where I think the that iRocker did a really good job with the nautical. Stayed up front, it, no, it's not as, the nautical is not as fast as the iRocker or the Blackfin lineup. Um, a lot of that I attribute simply to the the dual layer instead of the triple layer. So you can see as I jump up and down, you get you get quite a bit of flex. And so when you're really pushing hard, you do you do lose some efficiency there. That being said, on the 11.6, you're a little faster than the 10.6. And how they compare against the 11 foot eye rocker, in my speed test over the last couple of years, pretty consistently, they're really only a couple seconds shorter in like the 100 yard dash. Um, so where I'm, when I'm paddling about 80% power for about 50, 55 seconds. So really not bad. And really kind of goes to show how this board isn't just a beginner board, but it really, you can continue to use it and go on nice long paddles with your friends um, and still save, save some money. With the tracking wise, honestly, I found them to track very similar to the iRockers. A little bit less, most likely I think because of the lightweightness, it kind of pushes you a little bit side to side, but it's really close. That's me being very picky. That tri-fin setup does a really good job with the tracking and just helps you, you know, obviously the better you track, the faster you're gonna be and the just the more fun you're gonna have on those longer paddles. So again, with in, in terms of speed and tracking, I'm, I'm gonna give Nautical an A+, especially, especially for this price range. So from this review, I think you can tell we're pretty big fans of the Nautical. And what we found over the last several years of testing it is that not only is it a really nice budget board, right? Like, so for anybody out there that really is just getting in to SUP, you know, you just wanna get your toes a little wet and see if you like it, like this would be probably our top recommended budget sup 
Um, there's a couple others out there that are really good too, but this is one of the top. And the reason being is yes, the price point, it nails it. it you don't get cheaper than this and anything that I would ever recommend, right? The nautical, good price point, but you still get a lot of accessories. You get a lot of that research and development that iRocker pulled down from their higher end boards all in here, right? So you get a lot of stuff that they really do, do make this board a little better board and you see that on the performance side. Again, if you're a beginner looking for a budget board, find a board that you can stand up on and actually enjoy stand up paddle boarding. And this is one that, that can do that. Um, if, you're, if you're a little taller, you know, again, above 5'7", five, 5'8", five, if, if you weigh a little more above 170, then go with the 11'6". If you wanna put some kids on or a lot more gear, go with the 11'6". But if you want something a little more sporty and maneuverable, go with the 10.6 version. Really just match it to your size. You can even talk to iRocker, they'll give you some recommendations. But keep in mind with bottom line with this board, it's a good value priced SUP that you can start with, but also grow into and have a lot of fun for a lot of years to come. So I hope that review was helpful. If we definitely do go a little more in depth on our written review. So there's a link down below that'll take you to that full written review. You can see good photos of all the accessories, all the features, and just, again, it's a little more in depth. So please go there, check it out. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below and we'll definitely get back to you. We really do wanna help the, the community, the supping community grow. And so we're here to answer those questions for you if we did forget something. Um, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Ali and I um, are going to be doing a lot of more, a lot of other videos coming up here this summer. We're really excited about it. So definitely subscribe to the channel and I hope you have a great day.